Okay, we are sitting here with Mr. Uh, Doctor of Science Heinz Willebrand, and we are talking about uh, free space optics. Uh, Herr Doctor uh, Willebrand is a representative, CEO, and president of Lightpoint from the United States of America. Herr Doctor, or the Mr. PhD Willebrand, uh, will you be so kind and for our listeners sell, uh, tell everything what you uh, want to tell about your products, about your selling, everything what you uh, think that will be interesting, please. How much time, how much time do I have? Uh, you have all the time uh, what uh, the, time the, batteries, the batteries have. Okay, okay. So the, the technology that we as a company called Lightpoint are promoting is a technology called Free Space Optics and uh, it deals with sending information between remote locations uh, at a very high speed. Uh. So other than uh, wireless solutions that operate in the typical lower frequency range, there is a lot of free spectrum available in the uh, optical uh, arena. Uh. Okay. And so the advantage of this technology is, of course, that it is license-free, and that applies actually to the whole world. So it's probably the only band uh, for transmission through the air which is unlicensed all over the world. Um, and uh, the capabilities of free space optics on the speed side um, are right now around commercially around a gigabit per second. Full duplex traffic gigabit per second, right? And uh, there are a variety of uh, approaches that people had taken on, on, on building these systems. Right? And uh, in general, everybody uses some semiconductor lasers. Right? And uh, there are typically two wavelengths that people use, either 850 or 1.5 micron. On the communication side, um, there, is, um, there is a logical choice to use these kind of lasers because of the lifetime that you can achieve there, and these are telecom grade lasers, that's why people use them. Eh? And, and free space optics in general uses, then, again, lasers and two terminals. Um, since it's an optical technology, unlike a radio, you don't have a of a radio antenna, like a grid antenna or parabolic antenna, but you use optical lenses to send and receive the beam. Right? And you can design these systems on the transmission sites that they are totally eye safe. Right? So you send the information out through the lens. Right? There's an international standard on eye safety that you want to comply with, which is called Class 1M. Class 1, yes. Right? Our, our systems comply with it. And then, uh, yeah, what you virtually have to do is you have to put uh, the system on either location. You need line of sight, like with all very high frequency signals. They do not penetrate through walls. Right? And uh, then you connect them easily, typically to an Ethernet network. I mean, most of the systems that we are selling, probably about 99%, go into Ethernet applications. Right? But there, yeah. May I ask you something? Uh, at the both of your, one of your representative, I saw you have free space optic system with four lasers. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us more mm -hmm. about why four lasers? So, so four lasers uh, was done not because four is such a magical number. Huh? Okay. Four lasers is done because when you use multiple lasers, then of course you add additional redundancy to your pass. Huh? They are also spatially separated. So initially, when people we're looking into free space optics and you just have one laser beam then questions like what happens if let's say a pigeon comes yes, and flies through the beam so what this will do is it will shortly interrupt the beam now when you use an ethernet protocol tcp ip you will resend the packets but if you use one of the older pdh protocols and okay. let's say you connect a phone switch right, then the short disruption can lead to a disconnection of the <coughs> of the device. Right? So uh, this is kind of one one way to look at it. The other way is um, when you transmit a beam. Sorry, my voice is okay. a little bit going down. Then <coughs> there's something called heat shimmer. Everybody experiences that in summer when you so drive across that. the street and it's hot. Yes, I then know that. You you kind of see it that that uh, wave field gets a little bit distorted, right? And uh, since we deal with an optical technology, then uh, we, the free space optic system would see that too, and that would lead to higher bit error rate. So using multiple laser beams, and also when you look carefully at the system, there are also multiple receive lenses. <coughs> so we use four transmitters and four receive lenses, 
and we have done extensive research on what that will do to scintillation. Huh? I know about right. scintillation, yes. Right, and it will dr dramatically reduce the impact of uh, on of scintillation. Huh? So the bit error rate performance of your system will dramatically increase. Okay. And of course, if you use multiple lasers, you also have more power. You're still eye safe, so it gives you a little bit more range. That's the other part too. Yeah. My next next question <coughs> is. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Willebrand, Dr. Willebrand, uh, tell us please, if you are using four lasers, uh, how does it uh, multiplicate it about uh, security system? Why? Uh, you and I know that uh, one laser beam is a very, very uh, high security system for transmission uh, data packets because when you are try to interrupt that laser beam, mm -hmm. The system is going uh, down or uh, stopping everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you have four laser systems and four receivers, of course, mm -hmm. then you have spread your uh, laser beam. And after that, uh, how or do you selling your products to, for example, military, police, uh, I don't know how. No, we do, of course. I mean, there, there are different applications for this technology and, uh, uh, of course, government uh, uh, applications. Uh, we sell these systems to military. Okay. Uh, and military were also the first people to use, actually, free space yes. optics technology yes. because of the security of the transmission pass and you cannot jam it and yes, all yes, of yes, that. Yes, of course. So what you were saying that you have, <coughs> if you have multiple beams... Uh, yes, yes, of course. Then... Uh, it still is that not that the beam is really not much bigger because the way you design the system is okay. that uh, when you align it, that okay. the, all the beams in the on the far field yes. they will all overlap, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it's not that the beam becomes four times as large because okay. the beam divergence of each single laser beam is the same as if you have four. Okay. Right. So there is no uh, no impact there, right? And, and so that does not really impact that that, that uh, security performance there okay. at that point. Uh, that is that is very good solution.